Machine shop. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to yet another Outward Top 5. Today, we're talking about the two-handed sword or claymore. What are the best long swords in the game? Luckily, this weapon type is full of cool and powerful options. And claymores have more going for them as well. They're long and let you hit enemies from safe distances. They deal high damage and work very well with counter skills. Very well with counter skills. And we of course can't forget about the weapon master skill from New Sirocco called Moment of Truth. That alone makes two-handed swords extremely powerful since it ignores half of the enemy's defenses. This weapon type packs a punch and can give you some swift and precise attacks. Before we start the list, I do want to mention two options I will be leaving out. That is the Zagus Saw and Gep's Longblade. The Zagus Saw inflicts pain and can be enchanted with crumbling anger to build up burning, poison, and extreme poison on the enemy. This makes it a top tier weapon that is capable of dealing high physical damage and also looking crazy cool. However, I tend to avoid it because of its speed and I prefer SAR for physical damage. Gep's Longblade is an amazing weapon as well and I put its one-handed version in my top 5 swords. However, I really like the one-handed better, and I can't really see myself taking the long blade over some of these other options. So just know that those two are really strong contenders for the best claymores, but I went with some other options. Here are the top five long swords in Outward Definitive Edition. A good claymore to pick up is the Pathfinder Claymore. Now, I'll be honest here, I'm not the biggest fan of this weapon overall. It feels like it should do more damage, which of course is going to depend on armor. The reason I included it, however, is because it deals an overwhelmingly high amount of decay damage. 10 physical and 30 decay. Most weapons have either an equal amount of physical and elemental damage, or simply more physical. This guy already stands out for being mostly decay focused. On top of this, it will inflict elemental vulnerability in around 3 or 4 hits, which makes enemies weaker to elemental attacks. On paper, this long sword sounds amazing, so why is the damage in this video kind of meh? Well, turns out the way to go about using this guy would be to max out your decay damage with probably horror armor or antique plate enchanted with Spirit of Harmattan. Then become corrupted for up to 50% extra decay damage. This would grant you an insanely high amount of decay damage that cuts things down quickly. Unfortunately, the Scepter of the Cruel Priest is the best weapon overall for corruption builds. What that mace doesn't offer is the elemental vulnerability. You can throw a decay varnish into your sword, deal really high numbers of damage, and then make the enemy 25% weaker to your decay damage at the same time. There isn't much room to play around with the Pathfinder Claymore as it really only works with max decay damage. But the results are pretty awesome, and any weapon that inflicts elemental vulnerability immediately has my interest. You can loot this weapon from a marsh bandit in the Dead Roots Cave, or buy it from the smuggler in the slums. She has a pretty good chance of selling it. Also, don't forget that this rusted slicer is pretty slow. It's going to be great with counter skills, or as usual, wind infused to boost its speed and impact. As a lover of the Kazite Spellblade skill tree, this Thermal Claymore will always be one of my favorites. It's a boss weapon that requires Pearlbird's Courage, Haunted Memory, Leyline Figment, and Vendival's Hospitality to craft. One reason to use this elegant weapon is simply for the looks. It resembles the giant sword sticking out of the sand in the desert and has runes plastered on the side of the blade. A beautiful weapon to carry around and grants you that cultured status we so desire. It also inflicts pain and deals 53 damage and 50 impact. It hits hard against the enemy and is going to buff its own damage after only a few hits with that pain status. Zagasol does the same thing up to this point, but has a great enchantment, so I would replace it here if I wanted it on my list. However, I chose the Thermal Claymore because it grants a bonus to fire and cold damage by 15%. This is an excellent weapon for mages because it not only offers you more elemental damage, but grants you access to decent physical damage at the same time. Pair an Ice Varnish with Fire Sigil and this sword really comes alive. I think it's a very unique way to use fire and ice damage together. And it's got a 1 attack speed, meaning you will be well off in combat. 
The Thermal Claymore stands out in multiple ways and gives you access to a pretty open playstyle. Might take you longer to get, but sure seems to pay off in the end. This weapon here is the Masterpiece Claymore. I myself have not delved into the Masterpiece weapons much. They grant 25% extra damage to main weapon skills, which is very good in a Claymore's case because multiple attacks can be used efficiently with them. But often I opt for SAR weapons instead because they deal more damage and never break. Just always felt pushed in their direction instead of these other types. That being said, the Masterpiece Claymore is awesome. It looks wicked with its massive hilt and curvy blade. In fact, it may be one of the longest claymores, which might not seem to matter much at first, but you can hit enemies from pretty far away with this beast and almost stay out of an enemy's attack range entirely. The thing feels fun to swing around and has 57 physical damage with 50 impact. It swings easily with a 1.0 attack speed and of course pair it with some counter skills. Once you use these skills, you're getting around 25% extra damage and things just die. Almost immediately. You will need to loot ornate chests in Caldera for a Damascene, Damascene, however you say it, Claymore. Then Legacy chest it. But I had a really fun time with this behemoth when I was using it. These weapons have a niche way of playing them, sort of, but when used correctly, they are very deadly. And when paired with Moment of Truth that bypasses half of an enemy's defense, it's unbelievable simply cuts health bars in half or outright kills in a single shot. Definitely not the best sword in the game, but man does it hit like a truck. And I love the sleek red look it has. You'll need to focus on attack skills to make this work, but I definitely think it's worth it. The Masterpiece Claymore is something you need to try before settling on a Claymore. It offers more than you might think. For second place among the Claymores, we have our good old Sar Claymore. I had to include this one in our list as it's simply amazing. There's a build on the official Outward Wiki called Master of Weapons. This build uses the Sar Claymore with Speedster skill tree to have near infinite cooldown, which, as you can imagine, crushes opponents. Just absolutely obliterates them because Sar weapons have such high physical damage. The Claymore is of course really slow, but with 76 physical damage and 60 impact, it is the Giga Chad of all two-handed swords. And luckily for this weapon type, speed doesn't even matter, because you'll be focusing on skills such as counters and moment of truth. Speed really doesn't factor in with these skills often, letting you kill an enemy in one or two uses paired with zero regular attacks. But heck, say you want to swing the thing around anyway. Go ahead, it has such high impact that you can knock things back before they get the advantage over you. Sar weapons are hard to overlook because they have such great utility, but the Sar Claymore stands out as probably one of the top three Sar weapons. It's hard to pass on such a weapon that can easily get over 100 physical damage in a single hit. Oh, and this sword also has a very, very nice look to it. The two-handed swords are some of the most gorgeous weapons in Outward. They have a lot of detail baked into them, and since they're massive, they often show off more of the detail than other weapons are able to. Yes, SAR weapons are good, we all know that by now. But the SAR Claymore is S-tier among its peers, and could be a little broken in certain builds. If you know anything about Claymores in this game, then I bet you guess Starchild Claymore was going to be number one. It's hard not to pick this guy, as you get it for killing the Royal Manticore, no small feat, and it's one of the fastest longswords in the game. On top of that speed, it deals 52 impact, letting you knock over most enemies in just two hits. This weapon feels almost too strong with how quickly you're able to kill things. Over 25 physical and lightning damage makes sure it always has the advantage in battle. Still not satisfied? Well, it's a porcelain weapon crafted by the Giants, so it has 500 durability, letting you use attack skills often while it rarely ever breaks. I love the Starchild Claymore. It is pure white with swirling designs and lightning shooting out at all times. It's thin and long, making for an extremely elegant weapon. Another bonus of this sword is that it can be used with one of the best chest plates in the entire game to grant you even more power and defense. Silver Armor. Bought in Monsoon and enchanted with Spirit of Monsoon, the thing gains 25% extra lightning damage. It is very tanky armor with little negative stats. 
Using this with a star child is almost too good. Not really fair to your enemies at that point, and of course Infused Light can be learned from Holy Mission to stack your lightning damage out the freaking wazoo. The star child claymore is good on its own, no buffs needed, but when you take such an excellent weapon and ascend it to near godhood, it's hard not to use. This weapon should be at the top of your list if you've never made a build around it. There's nothing quite like it and I truly think it's the number one two-handed sword in Outward. So there you go guys, the top five claymores in Outward Definitive Edition. I went for a few that everyone likes and also a few that I think offer something unique. There are other swords, such as the Obsidian and Sinner Claymore, that look unbelievable. But these top five have some pretty powerful damage that is top of the line. Let me know down in the comments section what you think is the best two-handed sword in Outward. I always enjoy seeing your guys' take on these, even though I think most of us will agree Star Child is freaking awesome. Claymores offer so much with high impact, great damage, and easy pairing with great attack skills. They're worth going for if you want a good build and moment of truth can also be learned from the Weapon Master after building the Arena in New Sirocco. Probably the best skill from that guy and it absolutely slaps. Use it if you can because there's nothing quite like it. Thanks for watching guys and if you would consider hitting that like button down below and I'll catch you next time.